Hello, and thanks for joining me for another two chapters of The Dragons of Blue Land. Well, last we left our friend the dragon, he was off to try and save his family, who is now trapped in a cave. Let's see what happens next. Here we go. Chapter 5, Back to Nevergreen City. High, high over the desert flew the dragon. The hot wind was hitting him hard. The hot sun made his throat dry. He strained his eyes to see each object on the sands to make sure it wasn't a man. At last he was over the spiky mountain range, panting for air and water. He circled down fast and plunged through the trees to a mountain brook. He had seen no one on the desert. Oh, I'll rest here until dusk, he thought, sticking his head right under the cool, gurgling water. Then he lay down in the brook on his stomach carefully keeping his gold-colored wings out of the water. As he dried off on a sunny rock, he listened to the noise of men and dreamed of how he and Elmer would rescue his family. Once he heard children's voices, but then a woman called them together and they all went off in a different direction. School picnic, he thought as he shook out his wings for the long, hard trip ahead. He wanted to reach Nevergreen City by morning without stopping. Up through the trees and over Seaweed City flew the dragon. He saw lights popping on suddenly among the streets and the houses, but he didn't hear that little boy who was screaming, Mommy, come look at the dragon in the sky! It didn't matter though, because the little boy's mother said, Oh, Chester, I told you to stay in bed. So Chester was the only one who saw the dragon, and nobody believed him later when he tried to tell them about it. I remember Elmer said he lived right across the street from a park, thought the dragon as he hurried on. Yes, it was Evergreen Park, and what if I can't find him? The wind beat back his tears as he raced over Seaweed Bay, over Mr. Wagon Wheel's farm, and the zigzagging brook. He thought he could see the road as the moon slipped in and out among the clouds. He flew to the coast of Popsicornia and followed it southward. Suddenly he felt flooded in light. What had happened? The moon? No. He looked down and he could see a beam of light leaping up from a ship off the coast. He violently zigzagged up and down to one side and then to the other, trying to get rid of the light. Men were shouting on the ship. Into the beam, out again, flooded in light, out of the beam again he flew. He knew that the ship's searchlight had found him accidentally, but as it tried to follow his flight, he thought wildly, how can they tell it's me? What do they think I am anyway? And then, as suddenly as the light had found him, it lost him. So he sped on in comforting darkness. His heart was pounding and hard with fright. As dawn began to break into the sky, he saw Nevergreen City Harbor, the lighthouse, and in the center of the city, a large green shape. Evergreen Park, he thought with relief, and he quietly glided down among the trees. No one had been on the streets to see him. Chapter 6, Elmer to the Rescue Dawn brought Saturday to Nevergreen City, and as Elmer slept snugly in his comfortable bed, he was suddenly awakened by a damp, cold kiss on his cheek. Wake up! Wake up! insisted a voice. He opened his eyes and muttered, Oh, it's Saturday. I do not have school today. Elmer, wake up! said the old alley cat, the same old alley cat that had told him about the dragon and how to rescue him. Elmer, we've got work to do. I just saw the dragon fly into the park. He must be in trouble. We have to hurry to find him a hiding place before the city wakes up. The dragon? Why, he only just brought me home. Elmer jumped out of bed and into his clothes and tiptoed down the stairs with the cat following behind him. So, silently, they crept out the front door, down the porch steps, and into Evergreen Park. You look this way. I'll go down the other way, said the cat. Where could a dragon hide, wondered Elmer, looking at the rows of trees along the walks, the scattered rocks, the pool, and at the place where the city was going to buy a new, build a new amusement center. A big steam shovel sat there on the spot, marked out by foundations. Elmer liked steam shovels and was just thinking of exploring this one when the shovel jiggled a little bit. The dragon! He climbed up quickly into the cab. Elmer, whispered the baby dragon. Oh, Elmer. 
and the dragon burst into tears because he was so glad to see his friend. The alley cat saw you flying to the park, explained Elmer, hugging the dragon around the neck. But why have you come back? Are you in trouble? Terrible, terrible, groaned the dragon. And then he explained what had happened to his family. You'll help me, won't you? He pleaded. Well, of course, said Elmer. Let's think out a plan. I suppose we'll have to wait until dark to leave. Yeah, I suppose so, said the dragon sadly. But you'll be able to rest right here, he said. Yes, it's Saturday. The men won't start work today. And I'll keep all the meddlers away. Meanwhile, let's all work on a plan, said the alley cat. The three friends discussed the problem all morning. Then Elmer went home for lunch. His mother was used to his long early morning walks, but she'd be suspicious if he didn't show up for lunch. That afternoon, Elmer took all the money out of his tin bank and went to collect things that he would need. So he bought 16 whistles, 16 horns, one cap pistol with caps, one ball of heavy string, six large chocolate bars, and three boxes of Fig Newtons. Fig Newtons are a kind of cookie. He found his very sharp jackknife and took a flashlight from the kitchen drawer. Then he carefully packed everything into his father's knapsack and went down to supper. He had $7.36 left over from all the shopping. Elmer, what have you been doing all day? asked his mother. I haven't seen hide nor hair of you except for here at lunch. Oh, I've been over in the park looking at the place where they're going to build the amusement center, said Elmer, which was kind of true. At last, the moment came to sneak out with his knapsack and join the dragon at the steam shovel. As he ran down the path, he saw the old alley cat waiting for him. I'm sorry you can't come too, said Elmer, climbing onto the dragon's back. So am I, said the cat sadly, but I am too old. I'm better off taking care of your mother and father. They do worry so. Well, goodbye. Good luck. Goodbye, whispered Elmer and the dragon as they flew up into the air. Ha ha, our friends are all back together and Elmer is going to go help rescue the family of dragons. Now I have a question though, <laughs> because I can't even imagine what he's going to do with the things he bought. My question is, what in the world is Elmer going to do with 16 whistles, 16 horns, cat pistol, heavy string, chocolate bars, and fig newtons? Can you come up with an idea? because I am very confused as to what all these things would do to help the dragons who are trapped in the cave. Well, I guess we'll find out more tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.